Welcome back, Shalloners. Well, you guys have been tagging me and tagging me and tagging me on Instagram. Follow me, Shallon XO, about Sean and Camilla. Now, we've talked a lot about Sean Mendez and Camilla Cabello here on the channel and their relationship that is just like, it for so long was something that the Mendez army was like shipping and so excited for, and then it just went left. It was like this Frankenstein. It's like, it's great in theory for like Jurassic Park. And then you're like, wait a minute, this is run amok and it's completely out of control and it must be destroyed. And I've watched the Mendez Ar army turn on Sean to the point where like, I am even wondering, is Sean Mendez no longer a daddy? Is he no longer a hottie that we need to like watch and obsess over? Because he said something recently that blew my mind, blew my mind. Is Sean Mendez kind of canceled? I'll break it all down. Plus, I'll tell you, most importantly, what we can learn from this, namely how to deal with cringy couples in our own life, whether you're watching it or whether you're friends with someone who's in the relationship and you got to shut it down somehow. But first, just want to remind you guys that if you have a love question of your own or want to talk to me about anything privately, find me on my website, shallonlester.com and click help. Also, today, later today, we are doing a live stream for charity. 6 p.m. Eastern time. That's 3 p.m. if you're on the West Coast. That's 11 p.m. if you're in London or Europe. Later, if you're deeper into Europe, I can't do the math. Look at me. I'm a blonde YouTuber. This is not what I do here. So there's plenty of smart blondes. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> but we're doing a charity live stream for a homeless mama in Atlanta. She has three adorable babies. And I came across her plight on Instagram. And she's a little bit handicapped. So it's really hard for her to get around and make phone calls. Like, my heart just hurts for her. And she's been living in a motel. And we're trying to raise money to get her into permanent housing. I'm also trying to work with some charities down there to, like, fast track her into some programs. Like, it's so important that we support other people because it really costs us so little. Even if you don't have money, you have a kind word, you have a smile. And for some people who are struggling, that means that means more than money. It truly does. Like you can, money can't fix your spirit, but we can fix that through, you know, giving back and just being loving and being empathetic and elastic. So we're doing a live stream today, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And how this is going to work is if you donate $25 or more, you get a free question with me that I'm gonna answer on the live stream. All you have to do is put the question in the comment section of the GoFundMe in your donation. I'll answer it and we're gonna we're gonna do it till we get through all the questions. So please join me, it's gonna be fun. We might have to do a two-part thing. I know we did a fundraiser a few months ago. We raised money for um, underprivileged kids at the Black Baptist Church that I go to in New York City. We raised $3,000, made a big difference. So we're gonna make another big difference, guys. Like we could snap this family out of generational poverty. We could do that. And it would take like a few bucks. Even $1, $5, it adds up. It really, really does. So please, please, please consider giving. It would mean the world. And you know, we talk about that's what makes an alpha female, right? She doesn't just lead the pack, she builds the pack. But let's talk Sean and Camilla. All right, let's get back to being who we are here, which is tea spillers, shit talkers fixers of weird celebrity relationships. So Sean and Camilla have been together for like a minute now and everyone kept thinking like, well, at first everyone was gassed up about this, right? The Mendez army had shipped Sean and Camilla forever. And then it became ugh, something else entirely. And it just seems very forced and very demonstrative and very fake overall. And the why it might be fake is like vague and nebulous. Now, on one hand, I like to believe that celebrities are human beings and for them to have contractual fake relationships is like, why? You know, like, especially when you're both attractive, like she was dating Matthew Hussey. Okay, Sean can have anybody in the world, but maybe this is the thing. Maybe who Sean wants isn't exactly female. I have told you before, I have spoke on it at length. This is not a scenario that I can handle right now. Not emotionally, I'm not there. Maybe in a few years, I will be comfortable with the idea that Sean Mendes is gay. I am not there. I also don't think that he is. This is what I think is going on with this relationship. I've talked about it before. I think he always like had a thing for her. And I think she is kind of like the Machiavellian one here. There's something like off about her. And it's, she's very, very, 
she's she's schemy she's kind of a schemer and like you have to be like that to get ahead in the music industry for sure but it's like she doesn't know when to turn it off like taylor swift has kind of crossed that bridge and taylor has always been like very conniving but she knew when to turn it off and to be really sweet and relatable like i almost called camilla cabello selena Ooh, fuck. camilla it's like she can't turn it off it's like she's always so extra just like who is it um Jenna Dewan said that at the AMAs like she mouths she's like she's always so extra I'm like yes she is like she is extra on stage okay but she's extra IRL and you're just like oh so I think Sean had a thing for her and Camilla and was finally like I know it's time for me to weaponize these feelings that this boy has for me he is selling out arenas he's selling out stadiums he played for the Queen of England I want a little bit of that shine sure I'll fuck him oh will you you'll take one for the team so she's like, okay, yeah, we'll get together now. But I really want us to be like out there, blah, blah, blah. I think it came with a lot of strings attached. Do you see what I did there, Mendes Army? That's one of his songs. Um, gonna come with a lot of strings and it's gonna have a huge benefit for her PR wise. And I think Sean was into her and was like, okay, sure. Like whatever, whatever, whatever you want. And then I just kind of see in him this sort of like, deer in the headlights thing where a guy has wanted something for so long and then he gets it and he's like oh uh, she's actually crazy and you know what we can learn from that we are like that too many times we are like a dog chasing a car what are we gonna do if we actually catch it what's it actually gonna look like if we're in a relationship with this person that we have mythologized to the point that they are no longer a person I can't conceptualize a lazy Tuesday night with like this good guy fuck boy I have who has lived in infamy in my mind for five years. Like I can't conceptualize coming home after a bad day and pouring my guts out or him coming to a family funeral with me. No, like the minutia of a relationship is pretty boring. And I don't think Sean like thought about that with Camilla. So here's how things have been playing out with them. It's it seemed for a while that he was getting kind of like Ugh, like weirded out by how much attention they were getting and how over the top she was like always calling the paparazzi always doing the most always grabbing at him this seemed to come to a head at the amas the american music awards recently where he won an award and she tried to kiss him and he like curved her so hard so beautifully hard and everyone like lost their mind like the mendez army and i follow like a lot of sean mendez fan accounts i'm so sorry i'm so sorry that i'm the way i'm also i follow a lot of accounts that have shifted into like very sexual fan fiction <laughs> sometimes my friends and i will do like dramatic readings of the sean mendez fan fiction <laughs> you have to tag me in please tag me in the crowd some of them are good. Some of them are like, he shoved his wiener into me and he's like, Arr. no one makes that sound in bed. Oh my God, I can't breathe. Oh, it's too much. It's too much. I want to stop. I just want to, I want to start an Instagram for bad fan fiction. Because when it's bad, it is it's so amazing. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm crying off all my makeup. Back to the AMAs. So Sean curved her in a way that I've never seen before. And at first I was like, that's kind of a dick move of him. He can't like kiss his girlfriend. But then I'm like, it's weird that that's what she needed to go for. You know, like I was thinking if I was there with my boyfriend, who doesn't exist, and he won an award, I would be like, Oh my God, like I would be like a proud mama duck, you know, just like squealing and flapping and everything. I wouldn't be like, I need to put my tongue in his mouth. Do you know what I mean? I'd want to like hug him and like clap and squeal, but it wouldn't be like, oh, like, mm, like, can I just like give you a quick hand job on your way to the stage? It's just like weird. And, but considering who she is and what we know about her ass, it isn't weird. It's perfectly on par for the pathology she displays, which is attention, 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 attention. And I just feel like maybe Sean is getting sick of it. Or actually, I thought that for a moment until this little tidbit. Are y'all ready for this? So one of you guys 
tagged me in this post. Sean said, on his Grammy nomination, Grammy, ain't nothing bigger than the Grammys, right? That's the Oscar, it's the Grammys. On his nomination for Senorita with Camilla, he said the following. Are you ready? <laughs> that, that, but I also think like it's so... I think like, here's the thing, like, it's amazing to be nominated for a Grammy, but it's so much more amazing to be in love. It's amazing to be nominated for a Grammy, but it's more amazing to be in love. You know what? No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm newly single, and as my personal life was unraveling, this channel was taking off, and guess which one I would choose every single day of the week for the rest of my life? Y'all. Y'all. Not just because I prefer to have a quarter million friends on the internet versus one human man who loves me in real life. That's not why. My therapist will unpack that later. It's because doing this self-actualizes me. This is what I was put on this earth to do. Not to be half of a relationship, not to be a wife or a girlfriend. It's nice, I love it. And like, maybe one day when I have kids, I'll be like, this is what I was born to do, but not now. This is who I am. And being an artist and a musician, that's who Sean is. And when he says this, it's better, it's great to be nominated for a Grammy, but it's so much more amazing to be in love. What he's saying is what his job is, is actually not what his purpose is. His purpose is to be Camilla Cabello's boyfriend. What? Okay, look, part of this is that this might be his first love. And we are laboring under the delusion that this is a real life relationship, not a contract relationship, not a beard because he's a gay guy. We're not doing that. I just, I can't. If that's true, I get that like this might be his first love and it's like, it's just a crazy overwhelming feeling. But don't say this shit out loud. Don't tie your personal life to your professional life. Don't do it. And also, don't act like it's a choice. You can have it all. Women can have it all. Everyone can have it all. But maybe you can't have it all at the exact same time. That's kind of the secret to life. You know, you can have a great career, amazing friends, a sick body, adorable kids, a husband who loves you, but maybe not all at 26 or 46. Like, it's something's kind of got to give. You got to set priorities. So the whole thing of Sean saying this was so weird. And I'm just like, Sean, are you like kind of canceled? Not like canceled, you know, but like in terms of like, have you lived your like last fuckable day as they say about women? Have you? I don't know. Justin Bieber has. Is Sean, oh man. It, the whole thing is just cringy and weird. So I want your thoughts on what do you think is happening here? It is kind of becoming more and more apparent that this might be a contract relationship or something but again like i don't know what he gets out of this what does he get out of this he was already selling out arenas and stuff i can definitely see what camilla gets out of it right even if he is gay and she's not sleeping with him she still gets to touch him i would take a hollow relationship with sean who might be gay as long as i get to touch him occasionally versus a real life actual relationship with a straight guy that's where i'm at that's where i'm at but let's shift away from Sean and Camilla and let's instead talk about couples like this in your own life because we all know a cringe lord, right? We know cringe lord when we see them and they pair up and they become a cringe couple. And look, we have probably also been the cringe lord couple, like, especially if you're young and this is like your first relationship and you're just like, Bleh! like, everyone needs to hear about it. I gotta talk about it. Okay. Let's say you're observing a cringy couple. Here are a few things you can do to deal with them. First and foremost, appeal to the least cringy person. A lot of times that's gonna be the guy, you know? And I'm not saying that because I'm sexist, you guys. I almost never give props to guys. But society tells women that they don't exist until they have a man. So when they get one, they like hold him up like Simba, Pennsylvania, you know, like for everyone to see. And like, this is their, this is their entire identity. This is the foundation of their life and their personhood right now, right? So a guy might not feel the need to be as demonstrative, demonstrative because society tells him he doesn't have to be. He can still do the cross captain, you know, eating club president, whatever, and be completely valid. So that's where you wanna go. You wanna to go to the weak link in terms of the cringe lords, okay? And then you're gonna give him a reality check. 
Because when you confront someone who's cringy, you know what they're going to say? Man, you guys are just jealous. No, no, Derek, we're not. We're not. And this is, I talk to you guys a lot. It's like, girls don't like me. They're just jealous. I was like, is that true? Or maybe you're just kind of a bitch. <laughs> like, it's, sometimes it's true that people are jealous. But very often, if you're getting, like, feedback at large, it is not jealousy. That is not the hive mind feeling towards you. It's you're doing something that's off-putting. So kind of, like, approach it like that. Be like, look, bro, like, I love you. We love you. We love you and Camilla together. But it's just getting to be kind of a lot like we would love, if I invite you somewhere, Sean, like I, I invite you. And if you bring Camilla, like you have to tell us that up front because I just kind of wanted one-on-one -on -one time with you and to hang out with you and like maybe like grope you a little bit, cop a few good feels, I don't know, wherever the day takes us. But you know, you just like bringing her along, like it throws off the dynamic and people just want a heads up on that, right? Like you love my brother, but I wouldn't just like bring him to things like without telling you, right? appeal to their logic and put things into perspective. It's very useful if you can use an example. Like I just said, it's like, if I bring my brother, that's going to shift the focus. Like, you love my mom. If I bring her to things, it's like, okay, now Mrs. Lester is here. Like, okay. Ugh. Put things into a different context and let them get a sense of what their behavior is doing socially to them. Now, you got to figure out what matters to them and you got to press. This is manipulation 101 people. This is shadow self one-on-one. So for Sean Mendez, he has, he has made some very telling comments over the course of his career about what his shadow self is and what is important to him. And one thing that's very important is integrity. What is integrity? Like I, it's like one of those words you hear, you're like, mm -hmm, yeah, it's in that poster in my boss's office, integrity. It's a bunch of hot air balloons. What does it mean? Integrity means your actions match your values, right? So someone of high integrity <clears throat> says, you know, I don't stand up. I, I don't like bullies. And not only that, they push away bullies from other people. They defend other people. That's integrity. Low integrity is like, yeah, no, bullies suck. I'm just going to kind of sit back and watch. You know, it's people whose values don't match their actions. And we have to constantly do integrity checks on ourselves. Like, am I living my life in accordance with with how I want it to be. Because if you're not, then you're in a state of cognitive dissonance. And that is very difficult. It's a state of tension where reality doesn't match what's inside and what you want to be happening. And it creates cortisol, it's a stress hormone. It ruins your life. Like it's, we all know the state. It's like, I wanna have a good body and here I am ordering my third pizza of the day. You know, cognitive dissonance. Great. So for Sean, integrity is a big deal. He wants to be seen as nice. He wants to be seen as trustworthy, a good guy, a stand-up guy, right? So if I were coming to Sean, I'd be like, look, I know that, all, that integrity is important to you. I know what kind of guy you are. You're a good dude. And I got to say, this over-the-top PDA stuff, it kind of undercuts that because, because this is the thing, you have to have a because. You have to have a because. You have to have a supporting like evidence for your claim because it isolates other people. You know, I just got out of a relationship. I don't want to watch like the PDA fest when we're just a cheesecake factory trying to have avocado egg rolls. You know what I mean? Like it's isolating and it makes me feel like I can't connect to you and I really want to be able to connect to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Find what matters to them and press. Say it's one of your girlfriends though. Say that she's the cringe lord and like you don't have a relationship with her boyfriend like that that you can be like, can you not? You go to your friend, it's like, look, <clears throat> I know that you like love dating James and you just like wanna show him off like all the time. But look, like part of the reason you wanna show him off is because you wanna feel like normal and cool or whatever. It's like, it's great to have a boyfriend and look at what I have. But honestly, it's kind of having the reverse effect. Like it's, it's, it almost like antagonizes people. Like it makes a, it, it's hurtful. It's hurtful because it's like you're bragging and you're rubbing our faces in it. Like, you know, if you were having money problems about something and I had a lot of money, like you wouldn't be happy if I was like, look at my YSL bag and nah, nah, nah. Like that would be hurtful and you would want to take a step back. So that's kind of where we're at. Sometimes people just need a splash of cold water. People underestimate their grievances against others and they overestimate their good deeds, right? This is this is just human nature. It's called the halo effect. Actually, no, I'm sorry. The halo effect is when you see an attractive person and you 
you know, apply all of these wonderful traits and characteristics to them that are based on absolutely nothing but your own assumptions. Anyway, so appeal to that and let them know that like, hey, what you see is innocuous and no big deal. I just bring Sean along to all of our dates. It's like, it actually does have an impact and it has an injurious impact to the rest of your relationships. And you know what they're probably gonna do? You're just jealous. And then you come back with like, I'm not jealous. I'm happy for you. I want you to be in a relationship. I love you two together. But there's a time and a place for everything, right? Like you love my parents, I don't bring them everywhere. That would be weird. Like you guys deserve to have a relationship that's special and sacred and private. And it doesn't have to be out in front of everyone. But Camilla, if you think it does have to be out there for everybody to see, maybe that's a data point. Like, let's talk about that. Let's sit and talk about that. Like, is he not paying enough attention to you at home behind the scenes that it's like, if he doesn't do these big gestures out with your friends and like French you on Instagram, it's like, then what is this relationship actually made of? Is he making you so insecure that if he doesn't claim you ultra publicly, you don't feel like there's anything there? Maybe, maybe. Get to the root of it. Try to get to the root of it as much as you can. Then, step three, my favorite word, boundaries, boundaries and consequences. If she really doesn't react well, or even if she does, just be like, okay, so just going forward, if we're getting our weekly mani-pedi date, please don't bring Sean. Just, we can meet him after. But like, let's just have that be our girl time because like, honestly, like if I keep coming to things and I think it's just you and he shows up too, like I just don't wanna go. Like, and, and I'm probably just gonna like leave. You know, because I don't feel comfortable talking about things that are going on in my life and like he doesn't want to hear it and it's just awkward for everyone. So if that happens, like I am probably just going to get up and go home. And then you got to do it. You deploy the consequences and you stick to it, right? And you should only have to do this once or twice at most before people get the memo. The consequence and the risk is it's basically a bluff. And they're going to be like, well, you know what? You're out of my life forever. I was hanging out with one of my guy friends from high school the other day. And he's so wise, like I love Adam so much. And like, I almost wish that I had like absorbed more of his like time in high school because I know he was that smart back then, maybe a little bit less. But one thing he said, he's like, girls are always so afraid to bring up things with guys. And it's like, they treat them as if they're just this fragile, ooh, it's so fragile. He's like, if it, if something, if a relationship, if a connection is really that fragile, let it break, let it break. And that's really true. It's like if you put up a boundary with your friend and be like, hey, and if you've explained yourself in a really like neutral, collaborative way, not like you're being a cringe lord. Like if you truly go into this with the spirit of peace over victory and she reacts poorly, that's a data point. Like, okay, well, am I your friend or am I just your audience? Am I just a seat filler? Something you need to frame him again so that you feel cool. Like, what? And if you're gonna come at me, if I'm opening up to you and you're coming at me with vitriol, I don't know that I need you in my life. I don't know that. And you don't ever want to watch your friend kind of swim away with a boyfriend never to return. But I talk to you guys who've done that. I talk to you about this all the time and how dangerous that is. The the hallmark of abuse is isolation. And I'm not saying anybody is abusive, but that should tell you how serious isolation is. If you think it's me and him against the world, no girl, it's not, it's not. If you have that attitude, if your friends have that attitude, that's because they aren't doing any sort of gut check, any sort of self-awareness to be like, maybe I do need to modify some things. Maybe the feedback I'm getting, probably not just from one person, but a lot of people, is on to something. So instead of being like, it's me against them and having this Masada complex, it's healthier to be like, hmm, I don't wanna hear this, but perhaps I should, perhaps I should. But like I said, let the fragile thing break. You'll pick up the pieces or not, you'll move on or not, I mean, life goes on, life goes on. But you don't have to like be in social situations that you hate because everyone's too afraid to talk to Sean and Camilla about how they're acting, no. Then distance yourself. Leave the Manny Petty date if he's there. Don't go to the party. Like, you can deploy those consequences and have those boundaries for yourself if you're just not in a fit emotional state to witness it right now, or it's gross, or you come at your friend from the angle of like, I miss you. 
I miss you. I want you to be happy, but I miss you. And I don't want to hear about only Sean. I don't want to see only pictures of Sean. I do. But like, try it from that angle and see how they react. But like I said, fragile things are allowed to break. Actually, Adam said that, but he's pretty wise. Like I said, join me later today for a live stream for charity. It's going to be so fun. I'm going to answer questions. And please, please, please donate on the GoFundMe. That's the only place I'm going to be pulling questions from. Um, yeah, and we can do more than one live stream. Uh, but if you donate $25, <clears throat> you get a question answered on the live stream. It's going to be great. And like I said, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO, where you guys tag me in this and y'all are the inspiration for this video. And I let you vote on the next topic and all that good stuff. And if you have a one-on-one -on -one question, find me on my website, ShallonLester.com, where you can take some fun quizzes about your social media and shop some new merch. 